Hi you guys, welcome back. I am about to make my fried cream corn or fried corn. Normally I use frozen corn, but I do not have any, so I am using what I have. And I have canned corn, so I'm doing whole canned corn and cream style corn. I don't know, that's not mine. And I'm using cream style corn. It doesn't matter the brand. I drain the juice off of my whole corn, but I do leave the juice part of the cream corn because it has the butter. So other than that, I use whole milk, but I'm pretty sure you can use whatever kind of milk you like. I use two and a half sticks of butter because you guys know I love butter and it helps to cream the corn better. Drain the juice off of that one. It helps to cream the corn a lot better. And then salt, pepper, and sugar. And literally, that's all I need. Oh, and flour. And that's all I need. And the only thing that I'm going to do, I have my butter at room temperature. So the only thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start off melting a stick and a half. Okay, I'm sorry. You ain't. Once I melt this butter, like I said, it was already room temperature. So it's already coming to a boil already. So you guys, hopefully you can see this. I'm trying to tip my thing. And like I said, that's pretty much it. I'm going to just melt this down. And I have my stove on three. I'm about to put it to like four and a half. And I'm just going to let this butter melt. Once the butter melts. Alright, once it melts, I'm going to add some flour to it. To make my roux because I love to make my own roux and then I'm going to put in my measuring cup I'll put one teaspoon of vegetable oil in it and it'll kind of help give it that fried taste as well so now I'm adding in my vegetable oil and I'm actually going to do two um, tablespoons because I'm doing one, two, I'm doing five cans of whole corn and two cans of cream because you guys know I have a big family and I'm just going to stir this and continue letting this come to a boil and like I say usually I'll use um, frozen the frozen corn or I'll do like the fresh corn on the cob and cut it off but it's so much easier to just get either the corn um, the frozen corn or either the canned corn so you just kind of use whatever you have. Like I said, since I do not have um, any frozen corn, I'm just doing the can. And it makes, it cooks quicker. It's going to still give it that same creamy fried taste. So it's not going to change up how it tastes or anything. And I think the only difference with the fried and the canned corn, it doesn't, the canned corn has more salt and all that. So if you are trying to use your, if you're trying to watch the salt intake, I would suggest the frozen. I guess whatever they were going through and, and now that my butter is completely melted, I'm gonna add my flour. Yeah, my mama is talking on the phone. We just heard from my sister in law in Texas and my stepbrother passed away Monday. And so his funeral is going to be Friday. So we just heard from her today. Um, he ended up getting an infection and it spread it throughout his body. He was at the hospital. He was at the VA in Texas. Um, so his funeral is going to be this Friday. So you guys just keep us and his family in God's prayers. Um, right now I am adding two full tablespoons of flour. Yes. Uh, yes. And I'm just going to kind of watch it. I may have to end up going in with another. Um, I might have to go in with another another tablespoon full. But I just do two tablespoons full at first. So I can see the consistency. Because you guys know it's easier to add less and then build up. Than to try to add more and then to take away from. I'm going to play in the microwave. Hold on baby. What are you trying to do? Y'all, he trying to keep his macaroni. Hold on a second, please. All right, you guys. Now I have 
this come into a boil and I'm going to show you guys So this is the consistency so far and you know when you have roux you have to constantly constantly stir it because your roux will burn very very easily and uh, this is the consistency so far of it and i want this to get i don't want it to get to like a dark brown like i'm making a gumbo or um like a shrimp or crawfish etouffee anything like that i don't want it to get to a dark roux. i want it to get to a light roux because since i am doing corn i want i'm doing a fried corn i want it to stay at that light buttery consistency and color kind of like a very very light caramel almost so all i'm doing i'm gonna probably cook it for about this will be probably about three minutes and it'll It'll cook off the flour flavor, so you will not taste the flour at all. It'll just give it that ruined gravy flavor. But like I said, I don't want the like the brown gravy color on it. And then once I get it to the consistency that I need, then I'm gonna go in with my salt, pepper, and my sugar, and I'm gonna stir that up really well, and then I can taste it, and then that way it'll let me know if it's sweet enough. So when you guys add your salt, pepper, and sugar, add it to your taste. I like for my fried corn to have a sweet taste to it, like a cream style corn. But I don't want it to be too overly sweet. But I want it to just have that sweetness, that just amount of added sweetness. But like I said, that's the easiest way to do it. Um, like when you're adding it in with your root, then you taste it and you can always tell if you need more. And if you put too much sugar in it, the only thing you're going to do is add a little bit more milk. And that milk will cut that sweet taste. Yeah, so I'm just, like I said, I'm just going to constantly stir. And this is another thing. If you guys have never made a roux before, when you're making it, you have to constantly stir it. And I'm cooking it on five. So you have to stir. Because when I say that it will burn quick, it will burn quick. And then you would have to throw the whole batch out and redo it all over again. Because if it burns with scorch, it's going to be bitter. And you cannot save it. I don't care what you try to do to it, you won't save it. Now this is going to go cook for another minute. So it'll give me a total of five minutes. And it's like I said, this is over a five or a medium heat. You can cook it higher if you want it to cook quicker. But I'm not always trying to rush, especially when I'm doing this. I would rather do it slow and take my time and get it right. Because this is something you can mess up. It's like making pecan candy. If you do it too fast, you'll mess it up real easily. So this is the color that I am looking for. So now I'm going to add my seasoning to it. I, my, salt, my flour was already seasoned from when I did my chicken. So when I seasoned my flour for my chicken, before I added the chicken, and you know, you season your flour, I put, I reserved some flour to the side. So it's already seasoned. But the only reason I'm putting a little bit more because I am at, I did add the vegetable oil and the butter. So that would have took away from some of the flavor. So I added about a half a teaspoon of both salt and pepper. And then I'm going to just let this come back up to a boil again. And now I'm going to add my sugar. And the only thing when I add my sugar, I'm going to add my sugar while I'm stirring. And this will help thicken it up. And I'm going to do a half a cup. And this will be enough for, and that's what, six, seven. That's seven total cans. And once you add the sugar, this is what it will give you. And you just constantly stir. It will give you to this consistency. Yep. Mm. 
and you just incorporate the sugar in it really well. I will turn it down to three, my fire down to three. And I'm gonna begin to add my corn. And I'm only adding my whole corn in right now. I'll add my cream corn in last and I will explain why. Because and this is why you drain the the juice of the corn. Because you want the corn to fry or smother in the roux. And then once you get the corn, once you get the corn added in, and like I said, I added five cans of whole corn. And all my juice is drained. So the only thing that you're seeing in the bottom of this is coming from the roux. Gonna stir this in really well. I'm gonna have my fire on three, and I'm gonna just let this corn sit in here just like this, and it's gonna it's gonna cook down in pretty much in the room. And your room is nothing but a little vegetable oil, butter, flour, and your seasoning, and that salt, pepper, and sugar, and that's it. And this corn is just gonna cook down in this and I'm gonna let this fry <laughs> and I say fry but I'm gonna let it fry or smother down for about a good 30 minutes and it's on three and I'm just come back in like every like every three minutes and stir it so you don't have to constantly stir it now since you do have the corn in but you still have to watch it so like I said, after three minutes, I'll just stir it again because it is on a lower heat. So well, like I said, I'm going to cover it and I'm going to set my timer for 30 minutes and then I'll just come back in and watch it every three minutes or so. And I will be back. you guys I'm back I'm back it's been 30 minutes and this is the consistency of my fried corn so far you guys can see this really well and it's kind of like it's just pretty much fried and creamed down so it's just like a whole corn that you turn into a fried cream corn yes so that is the consistency, like I said, thus far. So what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna add my two cream corns. And this is why I wait and add this last, because I want my whole corn to cream down and it gets all the sugars and butters and stuff, the natural sugars and butters naturally out. And then I'll add these two cream corns and it just kind of helps thicken it up a little bit with the roux. That's pretty much all it does. Um, you don't. You can omit it. You do not have to add the cream corn. I just do. I've always done that. Um, my stepdad and grandmother. That's just how they taught me to do it. So that's how I've always done it. Um, but as I said, you can omit that process. You can omit that process if you do not want to add the cream style. And then I'm going in with the other stick of butter. And of course, you guys know it was at room temperature. And I'm gonna add some milk. And this is like a cup. So I'm gonna start with a half a cup. Because this is another thing that I kind of measure. It's not really an exact science to it because I do have like eight cans of corn total. Um, so it's just more or less getting it to the consistency that you like. Sometimes I have to end up doing a whole cup of milk. Sometimes I can keep it at a half a cup of milk. And as you guys see, it just kind of gives it that extra cream. My kids love the cream that's in it. Like how it cooks down to that creamy consistency. They love it. Because when they eat their chicken and their biscuits, they like, it's kind of like the gravy of it. Like when you're eating biscuits with the gravy, that's just pretty much what the cream part of the corn does. And I say you have to really watch the sugar because the um I'm gonna go ahead and do another half a cup. So I'm gonna do one, I'm doing a one full total cup. 
But like I said, this is because I do have seven cans of corn. But if you only do like four cans, you can do a half a cup or less. And it just fin finish out that creaminess. But um, as I was saying, you have to really watch when you add your sugar. You always do less and then taste to your taste because the corn is already sweet. And then you got to um, factor in that you are adding the butter and you're adding whole milk. So if you don't watch it, it can get too sweet. And I have done that once before. It was still good. I still ate it. I ate it with my biscuits. Um, but like I said, it can get too sweet real quick. And you'll just add a little bit more milk and that milk will cut that um it'll bring that sweet taste down you don't want to add salt to it mm, get your face from favorite. over there he yeah that's her favorite. favorite but get your be sniffing over it oh god so you don't have to add any more salt to it you don't have to add any more pepper you don't have to add anything else more to this and then when you get ready to eat it if you desire a little bit more add it to that but what I've showed you guys is what I've always done. I don't do it any differently. The only thing that will change, sometimes I might have to do eight cans of corn. Like if we have it for a holiday, I might have to like Thanksgiving or Christmas, um, Easter, I'll do 10 because my brother and them coming over. Um, and since I'm doing this now, nine times out of 10, I won't do this for the 4th of July because for the 4th we're having um, boiled seafood. But if we were having like barbecue, I would definitely do this for the fourth. But since we're having seafood, I don't have to do all that. And you guys see, I added my whole can, my whole stick of butter. Now I'm going in with the last half a stick. And that will be it for the butter, the milk, everything. Everything is done. Here, throw that away for me, please. Put the milk back up, throw the cans away, and wash that cup. So I'm just going to stir this butter in. And I just say room temperature because it's easier to do your roux when your butter is that butter at uh, room temperature. And once you start adding your corn, if you come in with a cold stick of butter, it's going to make put this up, put the milk up, and throw the corn, the can away. And if you go in with something cold, once your flour and all of that is cooking, you guys already know, it's, um, it's going to slow down the process. So if you have everything at room temperature, everything will cook smoothly and you don't have to wait for temperatures to come back up. And you definitely want that corn to get to a frying or smothering temperature. And that's, that will help it fry down and it should give it that taste like you've been cooking this for hours. Which technically, it will cook for a total of an hour. Before I add my milk and stuff, I told you guys I let it cook for 30 minutes. And then now that I have this down like this, I'm going to turn it. I have it to the consistency that I want. I got my butter, my milk, all that added. I'm going to turn this down to low. I'm going to put the top back on it. And it's going to cook for about 22 to 25 minutes. And it'll be done. And the reason that I say that is because I'm going to put my biscuits in the oven. So once my biscuits come out the oven... And they're done, my corn will be done. And then the chicken will be done. So everything will get finished at the same exact time. Now since it's on low, I'll probably come in and stir like every five minutes instead of every three. But you still have to stir it because that sugar will burn your roux. And plus the roux will just burn just in general. So you have to definitely constantly stir this. But like I said, instead of every two to three minutes, it'll be five because the fire is on like a low or a simmer and then once it's done I will show you guys and you know anytime you have a roux or a flour to anything it's gonna definitely thicken as it sit so this I love this I can't tell you guys enough I think fried corn is like my ultimate favorite meal Talia's as well she can eat fried corn every day the first time she was little and I mentioned fried corn to her to this one and I mentioned fried corn to her she was like ew fried corn who fries they corn that's fat that's fat only yes. fat people eat fried corn and if you on a diet you might not want to do this because it do have a lot of butter in it oh my god it's just a baking pan it has a lot of butter in it it has flour 
So all of that, so this is not, if you're on a diet, you can't eat it. And then of course we have fried chicken and biscuits. But I am doing a, but if you on a diet, yeah, don't do it. But yeah, this is my ultimate meal. And then next is cabbage and cornbread. But I love biscuits and fried corn. And she did too. I don't like biscuits. I didn't say the biscuits. I'm talking about just the fried corn. Mm -hmm. Phila, why are you lying? But until my food is done, I'm about to eat me a plum. But yeah, I will come back. I will definitely come back in the next 23 minutes now and show you guys the finishing product and hopefully she'll be finished with her chicken. So we will see you guys in a bit. You want to say something? No, I have that true question. Okay, I see y'all did. All right, you guys, everything is done. This is the finished product of the corn. This is my fried corn. Philip, will you please stop hollering? Philip, stop hollering. And this is the consistency that I love it at. And as I said, it's still hot because I just turned it off. But as I say, it gets it's gonna get thicker the more it cools. You guys know how it is once you add flowers and stuff. But, and then my biscuits and then the chicken. So this is what we're having for dinner. And we wasn't gonna vlog doing the chicken because you guys know how to make chicken. And, uh, but like I said, I just wanted to concentrate more on just the corn. Because I know everybody, um, I know a few people have done this and everybody kind of does their recipe differently. This is just the way that I was always taught to do mine. So this is just how I done mine. So I wanted to definitely share this with you guys. So if you like these kind of videos, thumbs this video up. And um, comment below. And just let me know if you would definitely like to see more of these. Um, I enjoy cooking. So it's definitely something I'm very interested in doing. But I'm about to sit down and eat and enjoy my meal and have me some sweet tea. This will be our meal for today. Chicken, corn, and biscuits. And like I said, I'm going to do a salad um, as well, which I'll end up doing a salad after I eat. I'm just going to have this right now with some tea. But if you guys comment, like, and subscribe if you already haven't. And I will definitely see you guys in the next vlog. Until then, y'all have